Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Welcome back, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. We're excited to be with you at what's potentially the start of your school year or right before with some very interesting information about the books in your classroom library. Yeah. So (laughs) I went to a professional development. Okay. And they glossed over this. They mentioned this and I was like something pinged in my brain. They didn't really go into depth about it, but something pinged in my brain of like, that's really interesting. I need to research this at home. So then I did a little bit. But it was, are your books mirrors, windows, or sliding glass doors? And I was like, well, that's so different. (laughs) All right, so I'll give you the definition so that we can discuss. So it says, books are mirrors when readers see their own lives reflected in the pages. Books are windows when they allow readers a view of lives and stories that are different from theirs. Books become sliding glass doors when readers feel transported into the world of the story and when they feel empathy for the characters. So the professional So I'm guessing we want all three. We want all three. (laughs) But what they were saying was, this was a professional development about diversity in the classroom and equity and all that kind of kind of stuff but what they were saying is most likely the books that you have in your classroom are not mirrors and you need more mirror books you know so usually you will have books that are windows but they're windows into usually the majority right so like usually into a white person's life you know and if you have people of color in your classroom they're not really having a lot of mirror books, um, but you really want all three, you know, because the sliding glass door books are going to teach children empathy, you know, and, and those are the ones that are maybe a little bit about wonder and, you know, t- to me, that's what reading is. It should take you into a different world sometimes, you know, and that, that'll teach you how to see the world through different eyes, right? So I think the ones that trans the ones that transport you are the ones that are just they have they have a real depth of plot and character. Yes. And and there's yeah. something that the children can relate to. Mm-hmm. I understand the whole the window thing, like that you're looking, you're looking through a window. It's like being outside and looking through the window of someone's mm-hmm. home. Yes. And just sort of getting a glimpse at how they live. You know, having having lived in a city when I was young, I think looking in windows is something that fascinated me. I remember being a very young, very young girl. Like I was still in my early childhood years. And I, my bedroom, uh, when I looked out the window of my bedroom, I could see the building across the street. And, and yeah. you're in a city, so it's the big buildings. And I would see the lights going on and often people may be walking in front of windows And I always wondered what was happening in there. And I used to sort of make up stories about what was happening to the people in there. And it made me a lifelong window uh, curiosity person. Like when I I go for a walk and it's going to sound really weird, but if I go for a walk, like, and and I can see inside, like maybe it's darker out and lighter inside. I am very curious, but that doesn't mean that I have though. Right. I'm very curious. Like, how did you, how did you decorate? Who's it? Like, what's your family about? I, I, but I'm, I'm not like, that's not attached to me. It's something that I'm viewing about someone else where the mirror, the mirror is the reflection of me. And I can totally relate to this, like, um, you know, culturally that sometimes I was definitely looking through windows instead of at mirrors growing up. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's true it's so for important to see yourself reflected in books, in especially yeah. in the classroom where you're a part of. Yeah, you and know? you know, I think it's especially true for 
you know, children who may become, it's not only race, it is race, but it's not only race. It's not only race. It's children who come from, children who come from uh, diverse religions, and then you go into a classroom and all the books are maybe two holidays, Christmas and Hanukkah, maybe, if you're lucky, maybe. Hanukkah's in there, Christmas and Hanukkah, and, but there's not other books. Or or children who come from um, diverse family compositions. You know, mm-hmm. we, we are, I think, are aware, you know, of course, that some children uh, will have two mothers and some children mm-hmm. will have two fathers. And some children are also being raised by grandparents, aunts and uncles, legal guardians. I foster rarely care. see a legal parent. Foster yeah. care. You don't you don't see legal guardian books in nope. early childhood classrooms. So they are consistently no. looking through windows at yeah. families, at family compositions instead yeah. of at mirrors. You know what else I find is not represented in books is children who have different abilities. So like say you have a child who is blind or deaf or uses a wheelchair, those kind of things are not reflected in the books at all. Unless it's a book about, like I have a book in my class, some children use wheelchairs. Like unless it's specifically yes. about that, like you don't really find, and there's probably maybe not a lot of books written where the main character is using a wheelchair or the main character might not be able to see, you know? And and so finding those kind of books, but then if you have a child in your classroom that has, you know, uses a wheelchair or uses crutches or maybe their parents do or somebody they're not being represented in the books that you have you know and it's true and i find like that's we need more books written about where the characters are that or and represented in the classroom i guess it's um reflective of society you know Mm -hmm. when you were saying people with different abilities I was. I thought of you know recently was in the past within the past couple of years, maybe the past year or so, the first time that like deaf actors actually portrayed deaf people in a movie. Yes. It's mm-hmm. the movie Coda mm-hmm. that I'm thinking of. It was a wonderful movie, but I it was really the that. first time. It was the first. Oh, you have to see it. It was the first okay. time that a deaf actor won an Academy Award. Because yeah. they always had hearing people playing deaf people, deaf people um, yeah. traditionally. And, you know, if I said to you, what uh, deaf actors do you know? People would, might look at you and say Marley Matlin. And that would have that's been it. it. Yeah, and that's right? it. Right? Yeah. Um, but now we have more information about the fact that there's more people out there. Because we had an actor who's deaf play a deaf person mm-hmm. and win an Academy Award. And... and you know, kind of, I think that there's an awakening in society about um, representation in that way. Yeah. But I think when we're talking about children's books, it lags behind a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, when, when you go in and you're right, unless it's a book purposefully written about someone who who has some mm-hmm. sort of disability, unless the bur- the book is purposefully written about blind people you don't just randomly get a blind character in children's right. books. That's what yeah. you're saying. You don't randomly yeah. get, you know. And, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was saying, and if you do, they're not the main character. They're always like That's the background. True. They're like the best friend who might be blind or the best friend who might happen to be hard of hearing or the best or just some fo- like a illustration in the background and there's a child in the background using a wheelchair, but they're never the main character. They're never like the heroes of the story. They're never like seen as the most important part of the book. They're always just kind of put in the background of it all. So that like then, right. and then I feel like it checks a box They're like, Oh, see the children will see the illustration and know that there's a diverse, you know, abilities out there, but that's not, it's still not representing you're right. Those children. And when you think about race and ethnicity, you know, when I think about, well, how many books have I read where the main character is? I can think of Abby Yo-Yo, right? Mm-hmm. Where we have a, a Hispanic main character, mm-hmm. right? What's the, um, the, the snowy day where the main character yeah. is black? But that book has been banned in some schools, so because he's oh. black. Mm-hmm. 
So there's that, there's that, there's the issue also. Another issue of how sometimes your books that are mirrors aren't allowed in your classroom and it's over things like that. And it's, it's not okay, you know? So if we go back to the three things you were saying, we need mirrors where children see themselves and Mm -hmm. their lives and their families, right? Yes. We need windows Windows. where they can get a glimpse at different people because that teaches them acceptance. Yes. And of differences. Yes. Yes. And helps to obliterate that whole, there is no difference between us. No, we want them to see the differences and look through those windows and appreciate them. And then the sliding doors, that was... The one where that you get swept up in the story. Swept up in the story so that you can feel empathy for other characters. So this I'm says in this article, something up. it says students who are black, indigenous, and people of color are significantly less likely to encounter books in our school libraries and curriculums that feature characters that reflect their racial identity. The books they have access to are largely windows into a world of predominantly white characters or of animals. 27% of children's books published in 2018 featured animals as main characters, more than books featuring all non-white characters combined. White students, on the other hand, are likely to engage with more mere books than window books. It is quite possible for white students to go most of their K through 12 career reading mostly books about people who share their racial identity. So if we go back to Abby Oyo, Abby Oyo, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it was South African. Am I right? I think so. Yeah. Do you know the book? It's actually South African. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have to look it up. Uh, wait, I have to find it. But here's I want to relate it to well, what you're while you're looking, I, I went further in this article and it says not having all three of these books, these types of books, is a problem for all students, including white students. Seeing your culture reflected in literature is a motivating force for all learners. It helps you imagine your own place in the world. When children of color only read books that are windows and white students only read books that are mirrors, all students see an inaccurate representation of their world. White students also have fewer opportunities to learn about or empathize with others who are different than themselves. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna like... I'm gonna correct myself again and just say yeah. Abby Yo Yo, I think, is actually South African and would apply to this okay. part of the conversation. Yes. Yeah. But I, I feel was like... thinking of a different book. Okay. It'll come to you after. No, I can't remember the title. <laughs> yeah, probably. Go on. It always does. <laughs> probably. Yeah. But I do feel like we we're definitely our classroom libraries are definitely lacking in these types of books. Like yes. even the article says you you mostly have the window kind of books, but those windows are only, or wait, what? yeah, the, they're mere books for white children, but window books for everybody else. And it's, it's like, we need to have all people represented in our literature. And, and I think some of these curriculums that provide the books don't always have that either, you know? So, something definitely to think of as you're setting up your classroom for the new school year, because school years are starting, is to really look at the books and read them and see, are are all the children in your classroom represented in these books? Are they represented? Do they give them a chance to look through windows at other people? And do you have books where the plots are so intriguing that Mm -hmm. the children are swept away? And maybe those are more like chapter books that you read a little at. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Interesting. So you're going to go, folks, and you're going to look for your books and think, do I have mirrors? Do I have windows? Do I have sliding doors? Yeah. And if you have any good All examples right. of any of those books, please tell us so we can share it with others. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. 
All right, folks. And if anyone can think of the book I'm thinking of that was not Abby Yo-Yo, somebody let me know. There was one with <laughs> main character. Oh, my gosh. It's going to, you're right. It's going to come to me in the it's middle It's going to come night. to you and you're going to text me and be like, I know what it is. <laughs> this is how, this is how people know that we're actually human and not yeah. artificial intelligence recording this podcast because I messed up the <laughs> title and now I don't know where I'm going with it. We definitely so, are human folks, beings. let us so know. Thank you yeah. for just accepting us for who we are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. Oh my goodness. And so, uh, yeah, let us know what you have that you yeah. think are really great mirrors windows and sliding doors and we would love to talk more about it on the podcast yeah. yeah okay folks take care we will catch you again next week when maybe i'll know the name of that book i was actually thinking <laughs> of or maybe not maybe not <laughs> we'll probably forget about all right it. <laughs> yeah all right we will catch you next time folks bye peeps mm -hmm.